Have you ever seen a piece of art, maybe at a museum or a gallery, and thought, I want that piece of art. I could live with it. I would put it up in my house and I would love to look at it every day. Or have you ever had the opposite thing happen where you look at a piece of art and you think, oh my goodness, I could never be around that piece of art any longer than I have to. Well, art is subjective. Your opinion, your reaction to it is really the most important thing that matters. Not that we can't learn a little bit about its history or who made it or what what was behind the, the creation of it, but really your opinion matters the most. So today we're going to do something a little different in this video visit, and we're going to play a game of Would You Rather? My name is Elizabeth Gronke. I'm an access educator at the American Folk Art Museum with the Folk Art Reflections Program, and this is another video visit. Let's dive into some choices. I'm going to show you two images at the same time and ask you, would you rather have this piece or that piece? Let's dive into the first one. Here's a question for you. Which jar would you rather use at a dinner party? So here are two ceramic vessels from the American Folk Art Museum's collection. Both of them are figurative in different ways. The one on the left is essentially like a bottle with an opening at the top where the hat is for liquid to pour in and pour out. And the vessel on the right is a face jug with the opening at the top. Picture yourself hosting a dinner party and placing one of these vessels on the table to pour drinks from. If you have an idea of which vessel you would like more, this is a great time to pause the video and look at these and talk to the people around you and share your opinion. Which vessel would you use? Have you decided which jar you would use? Maybe you're curious about these pieces. I can tell you that the one on the left is called Coachman Jug because it's shaped like a coachman from the old days. It was made in 1849, and it's a certain style of pottery called Rockingham Ware, made in Vermont. And the piece on the right is called Grotesque Face Jug, made over 100 years after the first one in around 1978 by a well-known North Carolina artist, Berlon Craig. Both of those vessels are very interesting in their own way, I think. I have a follow-up question for you. If you know which vessel you would have used at your dinner party, what kind of drink would you like to serve in that kind of vessel? That could be a whole conversation in and of itself. That's what I love about this game. You can add qualifiers like, well, if it's friends I know really well, I would use the face jug. If it was a formal dinner party, I would use the other one. Things like that. There's all kinds of ways the conversation can go, and I encourage you to do so. Ready for your next question? Here it is. Which box would you rather keep a treasure in? So let's imagine that you have something really special, not huge, maybe some papers, maybe some jewels, and you want to choose one of these two boxes to put the treasure in. Now is a great time to pause the video and just like before, tell the people that you're with which box appeals to you, which one do you like better? 
And maybe you have some reasons why you like it a little bit better than the other one. Believe it or not, these two boxes are also about 100 years apart in age. The one in the left was made somewhere in the early 1800s in Pennsylvania, and we don't know who the artist was. As you can see, it was very finely crafted and painted. And the box on the right was made sometime in the 1930s by an artist named Joseph Yoges. And it's a style of art called tramp art, which involves layering and carving pieces of wood to make those interesting geometric forms. Do you know which box you would choose to put your treasure in? You don't have to know why you like one box more than another, you just do. Maybe you're having fun deciding which one you like a little bit better. Maybe you're learning a little bit about the people you're with and their choices. It can be interesting to see what people like and don't like and what some of their reasons might be. The next pair of artworks I wanna show you may say a lot about personality. Here's your question. Which weather vane would you rather have on the top of your house? So this is assuming that you could imagine having a house that would have a weather vane, you know, one of those directionals with north, south, east, west, telling you which way the wind is blowing, representing you on the top of your house. Would you rather have a donkey or a man whose arms spin like he's swimming in the air? This is a big question. So this is a great place to pause the video and talk amongst yourselves and decide which of these weather vanes would you rather have on your house? Did you decide? And was the choice easy for you or is it hard? Both of these weather vanes were made in the United States by unknown artists. We don't know who made them, but we're pretty sure they were made sometime at the end of the 1800s or early 1900s. Which one would you want representing you on top of your house? I hope you're enjoying this game of hypotheticals and opinions. The next and the last pair of artworks I wanna show you, you're gonna really have to use your imagination. I'm going to show you two landscapes and you're going to have to imagine yourself being able to enter each of these two paintings to decide which one you would rather be in. Here are the paintings and here is the question. Which landscape would you rather walk around in? We have on the left a winter scene painted by the well-known self-taught artist Grandma Moses painted in 1947 and on the right we have another well-known self-taught artist, Vesti Davis, painting Coney Island Beach in 1964. So which of these two scenes appeals to you more? Can you imagine being in either one of these? Tell some of the people that you're around which scene you could go into if you wanted to. Maybe one of these landscapes looks familiar to you. Maybe you've been somewhere that looks a little bit like this. If you could be in one of these paintings, which part of the painting would you be in? And what would you be doing? What I love about the game, Would You Rather, is that it can go so many ways. You can talk about what you imagine doing in those places or how you would use a piece of pottery if you owned it or 
what you would hide inside a treasure box. You can share your ideas, your opinions. I really enjoy it. And I encourage any of you who are watching to try this out with art. We're sort of taught that you're supposed to know the particulars of who made this piece, what is it made of, when was it made, but really it's just your opinions that matters most. And it's fun to share it and fun to learn from others what they like. So I thank you for joining me on this video visit and encourage you to visit our museum's website listed below. And if you would like to email, this is my email address. Thank you and see you next time.